Welcome to Living Life. Have you ever made a, a promise um, at the time you were in a deep distress or trouble? Uh, in, in particular, a promise to God and say, God, I will do this if you help me out of this situation. And then later on, you never fulfill it. You never uh, actually go through, follow through with that promise. Well, uh, the passage we're going to look at today um, uh, will refer to this type of situation with um, in Psalm 66. So let's take a look at the passage. Psalms chapter 66, verses 8 through 20. Praise our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, O God, tested us, you refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you, vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Selah. Come and listen, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and heard my voice in prayer. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Welcome back to Living Life. Uh, As I stated earlier, uh, and asked the question, have you ever um, made a promise to God in a time of distress or trouble? Uh, and then asked uh, God, if you do this for me, if you help me out, then I will serve you uh, and I will uh, take certain action on your behalf. And you never filled, fulfilled it or you never followed through. Well, this is kind of what uh, happened uh, to some extent in this passage, but actually in the reverse, because as we read the passage, we will see that the psalmist uh, tells us that uh, the vow that was made was actually followed through on. Uh, and this is a uh, this passage is a psalm of praise to God, uh, and it's believed that this was uh, Hezekiah. Even though the author is unknown, it's believed that Hezekiah is the subject of this particular psalm, uh, and in particular, Hezekiah is the subject of the psalm with relation to uh, the siege that was um, uh, brought against Hezekiah by uh, Sennacherib, um, where uh, Hezekiah believed that they would. Uh, be destroyed by the Assyrians uh, when they were led by Sennacherib. However, Hezekiah prayed to God. He prayed to God for his protection. He prayed to God for his deliverance, and God delivered him. He delivered uh, the the uh, the nation of Judah uh, from the hand of the Assyrians. In particular, on this occasion, it's believed that this was the time where 185,000 Assyrian soldiers died at the hands of a, an angel that God had sent uh, to protect the, uh, the nation of Judah. Uh, in, in accordance with that, um, we see that Hezekiah, uh, based upon the scriptures as we look at the passage, actually made a vow or suggested that he's made a vow to God. Um, and he talks about it, you know, from his lips. Uh, he says he cried to him uh, with his mouth and high praise was on his tongue. Uh, so Hezekiah, after God delivers Judah, goes back to goes to the temple and, and offers Uh, sacrifices, offers uh, uh, worship to God based upon what he stated that he would do. And he did. He followed through and he kept his promise. He followed through on it with God. Now, why is this important? Because it it shows us a part of God's character. And uh, and it shows us also a part of uh, Hezekiah's character in terms of uh, fulfilling our vows and fulfilling our promises. Uh, The scriptures tell us that it's better to fulfill a vow uh, not to fulfill a vow than to have made a vow and not ever fulfill it. Uh, in this case, Hezekiah, uh, to the extent that Hezekiah is the subject of this passage, fulfilled his vow in terms of bringing burnt offerings uh, to the Lord. 
Now, as we move to the, to this passage, um, further through the passage, Hezekiah doesn't stop there in terms of just making uh, and fulfilling his vow. But Hezekiah is so uh, enamored and he's so uh, in love with uh, God for what he has done. Uh, he goes and he tells uh, people, all who fear him, let me tell you what this God has done for my soul. Not just what this God has done for my land, not just what this God has done for the people of Judah, but he says, let me tell you what this God has done for my soul. It reminds me of Jesus when we think of Jesus dying on the cross for us. Jesus, the Bible tells us, is a lover of our souls. So Jesus was actually redeeming our souls uh, from the pit, from hell. So it reminds me, he says, look what God has done for my soul. Now, the thing is, he's calling people uh, to, uh, to praise God and to not only praise him, but to listen to his voice in prayer. Uh, because he, he's telling people that God delivered him from uh, the, the hand of the Assyrians and heard his prayer uh, and actually uh, gave, him, gave him success based upon that prayer. So God, so Hezekiah is telling everybody, he's telling the nations about, he's telling everybody about this God. Now, the interesting thing is Hezekiah says in verse 18, he says, God would not have listened to me. God would not have heard me if I had cherished sin in my heart or iniquity in my heart at the time that I prayed to him. So Hezekiah is telling us, he says, God listens to those who are pure in heart, but where we cherish sin in our heart or iniquity, uh, God will not listen to us. Maybe that's the reason why some of our prayers are not getting through, because we haven't gone before the Lord, we haven't confessed before the Lord uh, to remove whatever iniquity or whatever sin is in our heart so we can be clean and pure uh, before God when we, when we approach him. So Hezekiah uh, says, blessed be the Lord, blessed be his name, because he has not rejected my prayer, nor has he removed his steadfast love for me. And you know, that's exactly what it's all about. God's unconditional, steadfast love for us, even in the midst of our sin, even in the midst of our iniquity, God's love is maintained because God desires that we would stand before him pure and clean before him. As if we look at uh, the scripture in uh, 1 John uh, chapter uh, 8, verse 8 and verse 10 in 1 John, uh, it says, if we, conf if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we stand before him, we can stand before him um, clean. We can stand before him pure. We can stand before him uh, without our sins um, based upon the righteousness that we receive from Christ Jesus. What about you? Have you made a vow to God or a promise to God that you would serve him or that, that you would walk in his ways if he got you out of a situ particular situation or if he helped you? If you have, now is the time to fulfill that vow. Now is the time to say, Lord, I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready to serve you, Lord. I'm ready uh, to do your will, Lord. I'm ready uh, to know you in the salvation uh, of my soul. Um, now is your time today. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the listeners. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the truth of your word. And I pray that your word will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent because it never returns void. We ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Program은 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다.